On November 3rd, 2002, a Predator drone flown by the CIA fired a missile at a car in Yemen, killing Abu Ali. Ali was the mastermind behind Al-Qaeda's attack on the U.S. Navy destroyer Cole that killed 17 sailors in 2000. It was the first reported assassination by a robot and an early experiment in turning military drones, normally used for spy missions, into killers. For more than five years, Predators have orbited over Iraq and Afghanistan, ready to pounce on terrorists and insurgents. Predator is an aircraft that can stay aloft for hours, spotting enemy targets and providing reconnaissance information without a pilot or crew on board. The pilots are thousands of miles away in a trailer at Creech Air Force Base in Nevada. The military doesn't track body counts, but Predator has probably racked up dozens of kills. Oh, you got it. That was a good one. Of the thousands of robots in U.S. military service, only three routinely carry weapons. There's Predator and its larger cousin, Reaper, and in the Army, the Sword Ground Robot. Just like the Talon, but with a gun. The first swords were built in 2004, but they never deployed because they had a tendency to spin out of control and react to their operator's orders 10 seconds late. But the 2007 version is much more reliable. In August, three sword units were deployed to Iraq. This is the first time in any war zone that machines are carrying guns. Not everyone is so happy with killer robots. A philosophy called transhumanism argues that autonomous technology might one day destroy the human race. Some have called this the Terminator argument. Ironically, there are more people in the decision cycle for many of today's robots than for traditional tanks, fighter jets, and artillery. Predator and Sword are pretty much the furthest thing from James Cameron's walking death machines. It takes three steps to fire Sword's gun, and a long series of permissions from human bosses to launch Predator's missiles. The military is taking it slow with Swords. They've restricted the bot to patrolling the base perimeter until soldiers become more comfortable with an armed robotic squad mate. But even as humans remain involved in the kill chain, smarter drones are in development. They will make killing quicker, easier, and cheaper for armies that can afford them. While the pain and suffering of anyone caught in the crossfire is still very real. War, however high-tech, will always be a human pursuit. And killing a human burden. <laughs>